and I am your co-host for the evening, Memo. We have some exciting news for Star Citizen. It, we have hit the 38 million mark in the crowdfunding campaign. It's exciting to see the organization's features flourish. Backers are inviting more and more people into this world. In the process, they're making even more possible for Star Citizen's development. And the unlock for the 38 million was the Kano system, which is a home to a fully aquatic planet. So that's exciting news for the stretch goals. Yeah, it does kind of. It's uh, pretty interesting looking. You can definitely tell that it's an alien craft for sure. To me, it almost looked like it was a gun. I mean, it kind of looks almost like a gun there. Yeah, but it's a, it's supposed to be a merchant ship. Yeah, it's a lot smaller. It also looks like the part that's coming down is also part of, I mean, in the the picture we have of where it's uh, down with its landing gear down, it looks like that is some kind of, uh, you know, ramp on and off the ship. And you can tell the scale of it by there's little, there's people around it. So that kind of gives you an idea of the scale. I would say it's maybe just a little bigger than the Constellation class ship and not much more. But very, yeah, yeah. Having the scale in there, you know, is really nice to see how it is. For those of us who are backers and have got into the hangar, you know, we've been able to see, you know, what our size, how it sizes up against the various ships. But just looking at the concept art, it's kind of hard to grasp because the that first concept art, it looked like that ship was the size of a star destroyer. Yeah, that's that's an exciting, you know, little tidbit because people asked for that. They listened. They put it in the game. And, you know, the versatility you'll have with something like this, you know, the sky is pretty much or the stars are pretty much the limit with this. But, you know, they listened to what the people wanted. And that's been one of the things with this, uh, you know, this whole game from the very beginning is when the people speak, they listen. And, you know, they've even done things as far as changing some of the ship designs and, you know, just from uh, player feedback or, you know, backer feedback. It does look pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, but everybody needs an asteroid hanger. I'm sure it'll be some kind of add on you can get into. Because I don't know that I'll be a pirate either. I don't know that my combat skills are up to something like that in a skill-based game. I'm more likely to be a target than a pirate. Uh, we got a report on they're not hearing you. They can't hear you. Now can you hear me? Can you hear whoop now? So they've just been listening to me talk one side of the story. That's had to have been extremely stimulating. That works for me. So can you hear me now? 
still no? Well, we got a little bit of a delay. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. Yeah, they got you now. All right, let's play this next video. <laughs> So you got to see most of the um, guns that were, or weapons that were integrated into the game. You, you can see them working in the engine and outside the engine. If you watch the shows on uh, Fridays at 6 p.m., you can see how they work and you, you see the whole animations and it looks pretty awesome. Yeah, the next great starship. How, how awesome is that, that they're taking uh, designs like that, you know, player-driven designs and, and putting them into the game. It's just, you know, another another sign of how connected to the player base they, they are it's uh, also cool to see how collaborative groups really worked well together um you got people in germany and uh, england and stuff like that there's a guy by himself in alaska working on one there's a group of, from australia um i think they only let through five uh, this past episode uh episode one uh, to look at the guns and uh first you start off with the guns then it'll be the engines and then it'll be the ships and that's what we're mm -hmm. most worried or we're most excited about yeah, everybody here and listening to this, and me and Whoop included, we just want more info. Give us more info. Give us more info. <laughs> give me Alpha. <laughs> yeah, give me Alpha. Uh, I can't wait to fly and blow myself up. It's going to be great. Run into things, <laughs> crash into Whoop. It's going to be awesome. Hey, what? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there was also a PC Gamer uh, uh, pictures about the game. Uh, uh, check on the website, and it says something about it was in Germany, a, full, a front page screen, but not in Germany. I, I don't know these things. Yeah, it, it did say that on the website, but I know I get PC Gamer, and, and this month's issue of PC Gamer, it wasn't the whole cover of PC Gamer, but there was a, a blocked out spot and a couple page article about the game with some concept art, and uh, you know, they talked to some of the developers, so... It wasn't just the Germany PC gamer. Picks are not working again. That's awesome. It's on a delay. Oh. Uh, that might be it. <laughs> Episode awesome, right? All right, well. No, I think you're doing a fantastic job. I as like I to sit here. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so I guess they're going to skip one of the pictures, but we're going to get this one in there anyways. Oh, this is supposed to be a mining area. I don't know what that shaft in there, but whatever. <laughs> and this is supposed to be some kind of asteroid field. Uh, I don't know where all the wires are connecting each other, but it's cool to see the hornets flying in there. I mean, this is still concept work. Yeah, aren't these like some of these screen grabs out of the the video as well like yeah. the the combat between the hornet and the the scythe yeah this this one right here with the uh hornet and the um aurora right behind it th this is straight from the video um mm -hmm. if you want i can play the video later but that's a whole lot of time that you can make up yourself <laughs> all right this this the the picture okay that one you want to go that that one asteroid field yeah, that the asteroid field. That is that's pretty wicked looking. Yeah, I like the lighting effect. Yeah. Those asteroids are gonna do hell to my shields. Hmm. There's this one that I like cockpit to call the pictures. What's that? Some cockpit pictures here. Th this one's also from the video. I think the last three have been. That's an Aurora fighting or shooting out down a uh, shooting at a whatever. One of those. <laughs> it's glad you have the ship. I don't. Got one of those too. Yeah, the Hornet. Yeah. Yeah, super. The military version of the Hornet that mm -hmm. they had up on that special sale. 
And then I finally had to cut myself off because every time I go to the web page and I look at the updated ship stats, I want to get something else. So yeah, yeah. I've, I've cut myself off for the time being. Well, who wants to spend more than fifty dollars for a game? I mean, I pay sixty for brand new, but come on. I, I, I wish I I wish I could say I'd only spent fifty dollars on this, but <laughs> that ship has sailed quite a while ago. No pun intended. No pun intended. So those are those are the um, pictures that they posted on there, but they were the same ones that were most of them are the same ones that are in the. Uh, uh, video that you watched as well. I think uh, Alarly is telling us that is a Vandal ship there, the the one that we were comparing to a sand crawler. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a sand crawler. It's a harvester. The Vandal harvester is what it, yeah, it Vandal says. Yeah, Vandal harvester. Yeah. Was that a scythe? No, there was no scythe except for the first picture when I said I can't get to work. I'm yeah. Try to get well, it, but... it it was up. We oh. saw that where the hornet going up against the the scythe. I'm glad it worked for you. I think part of the problem is they've just recently changed the delay with Twitch to where what we're seeing is already, you know, as before what they're getting to see. Is that the one? It should have the picture up now, but it should be the Hornet fighting the skies. Scythe. No? Um, something's coming up. Okay. Episode awesome, right? Episode awesome. You see that one with the mining? I just see a black screen, but yeah. it's I think it's a delay. Well, it's not even showing up from my screen. No. Oh, forget it. Not important. All right. We could always run a video or we can go on to... There's the one with the, that was the mining <laughs> thing of a bobber. It's cool to see the different parts of the artwork that they're working on. What do you think about the Star Citizen ship not being able to transfer, not always being able to transfer? You know, I don't know about that. I hope that's going to be something for, you know, you late come to the party guys that aren't veteran backers. So hopefully that won't apply to me, but... <laughs> You know, I don't know how I feel about that. I'll, I'll have to see how they implement it in the game. It's just like, you know, the whole insurance thing, how you had lifetime insurance, and now now that is no longer available, although they're giving it on some of the special sales they do. So I'll just, I'll just have to see how they integrate that into the game. Uh, I guess then if, if your citizenship didn't transfer, you'd have to go back in through the single-player campaign. Some kind of quest, I mean, it, yeah. it depends on how they how they implement it pretty much what do you think about being able to play a uh, different race other than humans i think that's pretty much a must you know people love to create their characters they love a variety and just having humans you know for me it wouldn't matter i'm you know the character's going to be kind of secondary but for those people that immersion is everything you know being able to play as an alien race opens up a whole different you know starter category and 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 zones pretty much constellation versions yet nothing nothing out there yet no i haven't seen any of the add-on and i have a constellation i haven't seen any of the different versions out there they say it's coming though hmm. it'd be like a, a one would be an explorer one would be a fighter although i don't really see that one being a fighter it'd be kind of difficult to do on that kind of hull well, I mean, you could. I mean, you could make it basically a giant gun platform if you wanted to. Yeah, but true. as far as a fighter, it's a little big for that. Yeah. But uh, you could also probably have it to where it could launch hornets at some point, I guess. It launched okay. the Merlin as a missile. <laughs> it, it could have, yeah, it could have a piggyback, uh, piggyback, uh, be piggybacking a hornet instead mm -hmm. of just having a Merlin with it. Where does it fit inside the ship? Or is it just uh, it's it's right up in the middle of the ship. You can kind of see the original version they had. The skids were sticking out, but now the cockpit is actually raised up out of the floor in the center of the constellation. And it, it, the last time I was in in the uh, the hangar, you could not get into it yet. Oh, okay. But you could go look down into the cockpit and see the you know the instrumentation. Mm -hmm. But it was not able to get into it. 
I don't know how you would redock that ship there once you launched it. That seems like that'd be problematic. Magnets? Magnets? <laughs> <laughs> Big magnets. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. <sighs> to me, the Merlin, the Merlin really kind of looks, one of the reasons I liked it was it kind of looks like, uh, I don't know, most of the people here besides Arlia and a couple others are probably too too young to remember the original Battlestar Galactia series, but uh, the original Vipers mm-hmm. that they had. They look kind of like those. I know. Um, when you when you get a ship, you don't always want to keep it yourself. Um, sometimes you want to give it to somebody else or trade it away. You can even sell it. Uh, there's a possibility that you can even make ships and you know sell it for you know a good amount of money. Um, do you think that's going to work well? Do you think that you're, you're going to make a good implementation of <laughs> shipping one ship to another ship or another person? You know. I don't know about that. I know there's been a lot of things going on with the gray market just now with people buying up a bunch of ships and then reselling them to other other backers for ridiculous amounts of money. There's a gray market going on. They'll have to do something to address that, especially when the game, game is live for people earning, you know, the ships in game and then trying to resell them to others for real money. And, you know, you can gift ships in game now just by someone's email. And by the way, people, my email is just, just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, that's something they're going to have to address because, you know, the, there's a real money gray market for those ships now. I can't imagine that will disappear once we have something live to play with. You think they're going to actually implement it into a market system there, or do you think it's going to be all offline? Uh, I can't imagine they will outright, you know, set it up to be a anything that would remotely resemble a pay-to-win situation. Yeah. But you know, upgrades, this and that. You know, there's so much there's so much we have absolutely no idea about at this point that you know, I can't even really say. Hmm. What do you think? Um, you think they're going to set it up in a marketplace with an auction house? I and... do. I do. I think that would be really the only way to go for them to control their ships. Um, we can email ships back and forth to each other, like gift them as friends or whatever. But if you want to get something for it, there's going to be an open market for it. Yeah, the problem with the gifting, though, that's where the gray market came up, where people are actually mm-hmm. selling some of these limited edition ships for quite a bit of money, you know, outside a game. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they have they've kind of addressed that, but I'm not sure what they're going to do about it. Because, you know, if there's something somebody wants in game, there's always somebody that's going to mm-hmm. be out there willing to sell it, as we've seen as longtime MMO players. We've seen with the gold sellers, oh, yeah. item Definitely. sellers, so... They will definitely need to address that. Hmm. What do you think about arti- artificial gravity in each of the ships? Now, I don't think your uh, Hornet is going to have it because it's too small. I doubt well, my you're Rover's strapped have in it. anyways. Yeah. I mean, there's no room to move in a Hornet. But well, I, I, you would have to unless you wanted to bounce around the entire insides. Although, <laughs> you know, having that be something that could be damaged in combat would be kind of fun too because... Then you lose all of your gravity, and every if you're a, you know got a five man ship, you got people bouncing off the walls. Then I could see that being interesting. I think that would only be for larger ships, though, ones that actually have a down where people can stand on things. So that's true. I mean, the caterpillar you can or the caterpillar and the constellation and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. some of the other bigger ships, a freelancer, you can walk around inside those. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't expect anything smaller to actually have a grab system, though. Yeah, because you're basically strapped in. I mean, I know the Avenger has a cargo area where you can get up out of the seat and go to a little back area, but Mm. it's nothing to speak of. I would think you wouldn't access that, (laughs) you know, in space. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, or like our Leah says, coffee spillage. I mean, just think of what happened to your coffee if you lost gravity. (laughs) <laughs> get all over the instruments and everything else ouch hot <laughs> we need a new cannon ca- uh, coffee cannon <laughs> all right you're able to divert weapon or energy from weapons to shields to thrusters on the fly now they have this in star wars galaxies that or no, not star wars Galaxies. uh the the new one that's out i forget what it's called you hit a button and it changes your powers uh the the sotor but it's also uh, in the Galactic Starfighter. Yeah, yeah. It's also in uh, just the single player part of it too, where you're going through the daily missions, and uh, they also have it in the original Star Wars Tie Fighter, X Men vs Tie Fighter, all those. Um, do you yeah. do you think it's going to be a real good good thing to have in this game when they first come out, or do you think it's going to wait till later? 
I don't know. I'm completely overwhelmed just with the way the ships are going to operate and work um, from the start with, you know, your directional thrusters mm -hmm. and, you know, your complete Y and X axis controls. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of overwhelmed with that. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, My bad. I remember, I remember I'm old. I haven't... <laughs> Not that old, God. This uh, you're gonna live to see this game made. Come on, man. I hope so. I better <laughs> live to see this. Yeah, and you know, I I just I just don't know. I'll have to see it in action. Like everybody else, I've been dying to get into just anything with the dog fighting module, just to see, you know, what's gonna, you know, how things are gonna go. Because I have played around with some flight simulators, and it's supposed to be very similar to that level of difficulty. I'd hope they have, you know, some this is a beginner setting so you can at least get in there and not be discouraged, but they may not. Hmm. You know, I am chomping at the bit to get into anything pretty much. Well, I've played uh, Hawks and Hawks 2, the Tom Clancy space uh, uh, flight sim, and uh, there's an easy mode where you get this, uh, like, yellow track that you're supposed to fly through, and it's <laughs> how you dodge missiles and how you get behind enemies and stuff like that. I doubt it's going to be that... It's gonna be I, I doubt it is either. And to tell you the truth, I wouldn't want it to be like that. Mm -hmm. Although I think that, you know, in the Squadron 42, they're going to have some kind of, you know, this is your flight sim before you can get out there in a ship kind of deal. Or at least mm -hmm. I hope they do. You know, I, I'm a big proponent of what they call, you know, people call starter areas. But, you know, they ought to be skippable after you've done it once. Yeah. yeah. But to get the feel for the controls, especially, you know, I've, I've not played a game like this in... Well, I don't think I've been interested in a game that, you know, was a flight sim for years, a number of years, like I've been interested in Star Citizen. Yeah, that's true. I'm really looking forward to the um, flight and the combat system. Um, I really want to get into Alpha. I, they, they put in all these uh, um, milestones, 40 million is going to be another one, 39 million, of giving us new areas like we just got in 38. And that's all well yeah. and good. That, that's great. We're we're getting somewhere, but I want to play it. I wanna yeah, do it. I, I want to see something. I uh, get get my hands on something, you know, mm -hmm. physical, so I can, you know, see how the flight controls are. Give feedback on that. I think that anybody you talk to that has anything to do with this game wants to be an alpha, also. So it's <laughs> a, it's it's a pretty long line, I'm sure. Um, but I mean, it's a they are very connected to the community. You hear kinds of constant feedback from them about things players want mm -hmm. so that's that's very encouraging i just like a lot of people i'm ready to at least try something besides getting to walk around my nice pretty ship <laughs> even yeah. if it's a stock hornet that everybody gets to fly and that's all they've got you can't fly your own ships this that or the other you know i just want to see how the flight controls work you know mm -hmm. how the the physics are going to work mm -hmm. uh, do you have a joystick I do. I have um, one of the Thrustmaster HOTUS setups that has a throttle and a joystick. Did you uh, vote on the uh, the one that was on the webpage? Yeah, I did, and that the one the joystick I have is actually one of them in there. Oh, cool. That was one of the selections. Did you pick that it's, one? Um, I did, and I, when, was that the one that also had the something that came out from Star Citizen? I think I might have picked that, to where they did it. They partnered mm -hmm. with a with a they controller yep. yeah I, I would be interested in something like that too that was from because the one i've got is is fairly ancient mm -hmm. still functions fine but you know if they had something that was made by you know made with star citizen in mind that's something that would attract me as well mm -hmm. i don't know if i'd use the keyboard or mouse i'd probably want to want some kind of joystick as well but i'm not really sure what i want to use yet i just told yeah. them logitech because i like all, most of their gear and it's cheap so whatever yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of Logitech and and Razer and mm -hmm. and Thrustmaster makes the the throttle and joystick I have, mm -hmm. and they make a lot of good flight simulator stuff. What I've got isn't one of their more expensive ones, but they do make full flight setups with rudder rudder pedals and everything. That's a little bit much for me. <laughs> a little bit much for me too, especially when you look at the prices on those things. Right, right. My you dogs could get, get full, you, could, you could get your first round of flying lessons for what some of this stuff costs. <laughs> That would be pretty awesome. Wow. Now, speaking of uh, the voting part, did you also vote for the next ship that's going to be on the uh, next great starship? 
I'm not sure if I did or not. What were the choices on that? Well, um, I know the one that won was the gunnery, the uh, mer- mercenary gunnery ship. Mercenary. I'm, I think I might have missed that one. I think the last one I actively voted on was was the scavenger ship, and that's something I really wanted. And after mm-hmm. that, I'm like, well, you know, I've got everything I've wa- I want. <laughs> because the scavenger ship, I know we talked about that several show, shows back. Mm-hmm. We haven't got any specs or even, you know, it's still concept art on that. It's yeah, coming. Still, it, it's still in development. But that's one I was excited about, to go out there and be able to pick stuff over and, mm-hmm. you know, be the chop shop of space where you go out there and strip ships down. Somebody's AFK, leave them with just a casket, yeah. Yeah, someone's <laughs> AFK, leave them in their emergency pod. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. We wouldn't do that. We would not do that, there's no, no way. No. Uh, what, what kind of missions do you think there are going to be in the game? Well, of course there's like search and destroy, but you think there's going to be search and rescue, or...? Standard missions, you know, I know it's it's set up for, you got to look at what the ship's set up for. There's going to be combat missions, escort missions, uh, you know, merchant missions where you're hauling cargo. Um, I mean, the sky is pretty much the limit with different kinds of missions. I hope they have, you know, like a, a, a cantina on some lonely asteroid. You stop in and pick up jobs there, you know, get the community involved in it. Han Memo. <laughs> Yeah, on memo. <laughs> on shot first. <laughs> no, we didn't. But yeah, oh. you know, there's a pretty well look at the ships that they've got out here. That's what we're going to do. We're going to have miners. You're going to have salvagers. You're going to have merchant people. You're going to the merchants and salvagers are going to need escort personnel. Um, there's going to be, you know, pretty much every different ship config they've got. There's going to be, you know, a job or a mission for that. There's also uh, going to be player-made uh, it's in-game contracts. There, there's going to be a rating system also uh, attributed to it. Like uh, if you pick up a four-star rating, you're expected to have it more difficult and a higher pay grade, things like that. But that's also after you finish it or try to finish it, whatever, um, you get rated on your performance and you can rate the person who gave it to you. Hmm. So yeah, like our, our Leah mentions Info Runners. That was yeah. one of the other um, ships that got voted in mm-hmm. to where you would tap in and, you know, skim intelligence. I think that would be really cool to, like, mess with the computer players so that way when they yeah. scan for uh, uh, embargoed goods and stuff like that, be like, no, it's actually just plush baby toys or something. <laughs> plush baby toys, yeah. nice. Rubber dog yeah, that, squeaky toys. That was another one of the ships I found interesting was the information gather you know how are they going to implement that into the game it's you know like everybody i'm i'm hungry for new and exciting info mm-hmm. the, the lore is nice and i like reading that but i you know i need to sink my teeth into something at this point lore is not a game there's very little i pay attention to in there, so. there are a lot of people that is the game for them so True. i mean and you can't have a fleshed out game without the lore yeah yeah that's true well Especially i think we'll end on that Sorry? Uh, you have those people that, you know, they want to know, they don't want to know, they want to know why they're shooting this ship, not just enjoying the fact that they're blowing someone's ship out from underneath them. They want to know the reason behind it. But it's space. You can do anything you it's want. It's space. <laughs> <laughs> the space police take you to space prison. Uh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, I think we're going to end uh, episode awesome right there. Uh, we're going to look into more information in, I think, two more weeks. Uh, memo, I don't Probably know if you're going to be back. Yeah. I should be, either me or Thayman should be here for sure. Okay, cool. Maybe um, we'll do uh, all three, get all three of us on one. I know we've been planning that for a while. I'd like to get our Leah on here. Hint, hint. I would like to get our Leah on here as well. I know from reliable sources that he has a camera and he's mm. he's ready to go. He just needs a little more prodding. <laughs> Whoa, easy. Maybe we'll get him, though. He's, he, we can do an entire episode on just his ships. Right? We can. We can. He is a knowledgeable individual. <laughs> well, all right. So I'm Whoop. I'm Memo. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching us, and you all have a good night. Night, folks. <laughs>